Okay, so this one says find the slope of the line graph below. And so we need to remember about slopes. And the thing we need to remember is that M is rise over run. Okay, and if you go up, it's going to be a positive. If you go down, it's going to be a negative. If you go to the right, positive. If you go to the left, negative, right? I got, a, I got one question. And I, sure. I'm, I'm not going against what you said. Sure. We're in math world, mm -hmm. so y'all had left. So I talked to Lady D. I don't know her name. You know her? Uh -huh. So she was basically saying, telling me, mm -hmm. so like when you have your rise over your run, mm -hmm. she said your rise can also be your fall. Your rise over yes. your fall? Yes, that's when you go down. Right. That's, uh -huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And then you're either running forward to the right or right. backwards to the left. Yes. Okay. Oh, yeah. How do you know if you're running forwards or backwards? You choose. Okay. So I'm going to call this point A and I'm going to call this point B. Okay. So now there's two ways to go about it. You can either be counting from point A to point B or from B to A. And so I want to do both. So you realize it really doesn't matter, but you do have to choose somewhere to start. Okay. And so if I were to choose to start at A, would I be going up to get to B or would I have to go down to get to, to B? Down. I'd have to go down. And how many units? One, two, two three, three, four, four five, five, six eight. units, right? Yep. So I would have to go down six units. But because I went down, that would be negative six. Right. Then I'm here. I still got to get all the way over there to B. So I'd have to go over one unit, two units, three units. So this is three units. And I ran forward, right, to the right, toward yeah. the positive direction. Mm -hmm. So this would be a positive three. When I'm reducing that, what do you end up with? Negative two. And so the slope here is negative two. Now, I'm going to grab a different color. Because what if I would have chose to go from B to A? right it's still going to be the same distance it's just i'm going in a different way right so here would i be rising or falling to get to a and then i'd have to go one two three four five six units up right so then that is a positive six but then from there i'd have to go one two three units to the left Correct. It's going to be a negative three. And again, what do you get when you, you reduce that? Two. You still get negative two. So no matter, so no matter how you're doing finding the slope, mm -hmm. you can. It's going to come out the same both ways. You just have to make sure you start with one point and you get to the other one. Other Don't do half one way okay, and then half the other way. <laughs> what if you, what if you move first? What it doesn't you, matter. You just have so to make I, sure so, that you put it in the right spot. Because so, remember, rise and fall is on top. The run is on the bottom. Okay. So if you choose to start here and go that way, that's me running. That's fine. You're running to the right. So I have to put that on the bottom. Right. Okay. Yeah, but you're going to the right, so it'd be a positive three at right. the bottom. Yes, yes, and then you go down, that would still be a negative, negative. six negative. on the top yes, because yes. the rise and the fall is at the top always. <laughs> okay. So just make sure you put it in the correct location, and you'll still get the same answer. But the big trigger is here: the rise and the run. Mm -hmm. I want to show you another way to do it because you're going to get to use this paper here, right? When you're taking your um, test and it tells you slope formula right there and it tells you how to calculate the slope and it says M is the slope and X1, Y1 and X2, Y2 are points, okay? So you could also, instead of just looking at it and counting, to me that's faster, but instead of doing that, you could algebraically figure it out, okay? And the way you do that is you actually have to label the points. So if I label, I'm kind of running out of room. If I label point A, what are the coordinates of point A? Uh, negative, three. negative three for X, and then what for Y? Positive oh. three. What about for B? What okay, are the no, coordinates I, I, for B? That, that's what, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I'll let you knock that out first. What are the what are the coordinates for B? Zero, negative. Yes, because there's no left or right, but you do go down three, right? X coordinate is always left or right because this is the X axis, and then the Y coordinate is the up or down motion, right? Because it's the Y axis. Okay, so you're just telling me the X value location and then the Y value location, 
right? Okay, my question. I got the negative Shoot. three on the on the eight. Uh huh. The first set of numbers, the negative three. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Why are you at a positive three? The points up here. So in order to get here, I not only have to move left three, but I also have to go up three. Oh, and from, that's a positive three. That's right. You always have to start at the origin uh, and then figure out how you're going to get there. Right? That's how you label. Now, the formula says y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So I'm going to call this point 1, and I'm going to call this point 2. So when they say y2, that means the second y value. Yeah, the when they say y1, that means the yeah. first y value. Yeah. So what is the second y value? Negative 3. Mm -hmm. Then here's a minus sign for the formula. What is the first y value? 3. three. three. Then out of the bottom, what is the second x value? 0. My minus sign from the formula, yep. what is the first x value? Negative 3. So I have a negative three. You could put it in parentheses if you want, or you can know the double negatives or what eventually. Positive. Uh-huh. So, and then this, what do I get when I do negative three minus three? Negative six. And then what do I get when I reduce and this? Negative two, negative two, still. Okay, so whether you're doing it by looking or whether you're doing it by using the formula, you should still get the same, the same thing. You just have to really pay attention to those subscripts because you don't want to put the second guy in the front here and then not put the second guy in the front at the bottom. If you get them mixed up, you'll get it wrong, okay? <clears throat> so that actually helps me with example 15 because in example 15, I don't have the graph. I don't have a picture, right? And if I'm lazy, like I am, <laughs> I'm not going to want to sit there and draw it and count, right? But you do have that formula that you can, you can use, okay? The only thing is, is before you use this formula, you do have to decide which point is the first point and which one is the second point. You have to make that stake. You cannot continue unless you know which one you're going to use as which. It doesn't matter. If I call the negative 5 and the 4.1 and the 3, negative 3.2, and I do my work, I'll get an answer. And if I called them the reverse, it wouldn't matter. I would still get the same answer. It's the equivalent to traveling from A to B or from going from B to A, okay? So it doesn't matter which one you call point one and which one you call point two. What matters is, is once you make that claim, you've got to stick with the correct subscripts, okay? So do you want to call this one point one? since it was the first in the sentence, yeah. right? Yeah. So we'll call this one point one, and then we'll call this one point two. So then when I ask you, what is the second y value? What is that? Negative three. Correct. This is the minus sign for the formula. Don't forget the formula has a minus sign automatically, right? What is the y coordinate of the first point? Four. What is the x coordinate of the second point? Three. And then what is the x coordinate of the first point? Negative five. So here you can just compute it, right? What's negative three minus four? Later, just to be sure, <laughs> especially on the test, is negative seven. You got negative three people and another negative four people. You got negative seven people now, right? Okay. Here though, you got a double negative. So then you have positive three and positive five. So what do you have? Positive eight. And that actually doesn't reduce. The most you can do to it is just put the negative in the front, but that's it. There's nothing else you can do, okay? This one is the same thing, except something weird is gonna happen for these two problems. So they are the exact same thing. I'm gonna follow the same process, but kind of speed it up a little bit, right? Point one, point two. Let me write down my formula first and then write down the problem. So what is y2? Negative one. What is y1? Seven. What is x2? Three, three. What is x1? Three. So what do I get in the numerator? Oh, uh, negative eight. What do I get for the denominator? Zero. 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 Can you ever divide by zero? No, it's undefined. That's undefined. Mm -hmm. yeah. But when it's, when the zero's on the top, Yes, that's okay. 
If you have eight people and I want to divide them into zero groups, that's where it doesn't make any sense. What okay. the hell are you going to do with three people, with the eight people, right? It don't make any sense. But if you have zero over eight, you can put zero people in eight groups. It just means no one's going to be in every group, right? Zero people will be in each group. So that would be a zero plane then? Uh-huh. Okay. This is another I memorize. This one, when zero's on top, is okay. And when zero's on the bottom, that's not okay. That's literally how I remember it. Okay, zero on top is okay. The zeros at the bottom, no, that's not okay, right? Bro, that's what I've been telling you. I'm taking notes. <laughs> I'm not taking all these notes, bro. Yeah, you know, when, they, when they have something like that, where they get the zero is going to be the okay and then an O, uh -huh. it's usually easier to remember for me. Yes. Is there every, like, pretty much one a thing for every single? I guess little tidbits for yeah mm -hmm. and my brain works like this so I usually like to say things like that remember I told you the Dolly Parton J-Lo thing I mean that's yeah. just what my brain does but it helps me remember stuff people are always like how do you remember everything you don't even want to know because <laughs> I have to make up stuff in order for me to remember it okay okay so then now let's try this one so I'm gonna call this one point one, this one point two, and we're gonna do the same thing. And I write the formula every single time. One, because it helps me see where everybody goes. And two, if you're doing it all the time, it'll help you memorize it as well, where you might not even have to go look at your sheet for the formula eventually, okay? So point Y2, what's that? Eight. Mm -hmm. And what's Y1? Eight. And then what's x2? Three. And what is x1? Negative 8. Negative 8. So 8 minus is 0. zero. 3 plus 8 is... 11. And this is okay. It's just going to come out to 0. And if you stick it in your calculator, they'll tell you too. If I do negative 8 over 0, what does it tell me? It tells me oh, error, right? error, right? That means it's undefined. Or if I do clear 0 over... 11, it'll tell me it's zero, okay? So you always have your calculator to kind of fall back on if you get confused or you get nervous because it's a test time, right? <laughs> they put this chair up here, but now it's like super high. <laughs> okay, let's keep going. Now we have this problem. So graph the line with slope two-fifths and intercept five. This is nothing new. It's exactly what we were doing before. Remember that y equals mx plus b, this thing? Yeah, and we said b this is where you, uh-huh, that's where you begin. That's the y-intercept. And then this is how you move, right? Yeah. You always begin at the point and then you move, okay? This is the same thing. They just didn't give me the equation. They gave it to me in a sentence. But I can still do the same thing. Where's the y-intercept five? Five. In what direction if I start from the origin? Uh, up. up. So one, two, three, four, five. And that's gonna be your first point you plot. Uh-huh. Okay, that's so I have right. to begin at the point. Okay. <laughs> because how am I gonna move, right? You can't move unless you have a spot to start with, right? Is he making fun of you? Yeah, I'm glad you caught on. I was gonna be saying so. Be quiet. <laughs> it's funny because I did the same thing to my boyfriend said something and I said to him. <laughs> I was like, oh, it's rubbing off on me. <laughs> okay, so from there, how do I move? This is my slope. Uh, five units to the right and two units up. Yes, rise and run, right? So I have to rise two because it's positive and always run forward. I always tell people, don't, you could do the backwards thing too, but I always just do one motion and I keep repeating it and it'll give me the line, okay? So from here, I'm going to go up two and then over one, two, three, four, five. Now, I could draw the line with that, or I could do it again, and it'll still line up. It depends on what the computer wants you. I think the computer will accept just two dots. It's not until you get into the weird graphs that it'll make you do, like, five dots. But that's not the college algebra, so you're okay. No, I'm lying. It's in 320. Now, 19 is actually the same thing. It is slightly different because they don't tell you the y-intercept, right? But they still give you a point. 
So you still have a spot to begin at, okay? So instead of the y-intercept, I'm gonna begin at this point, which is negative one for x and then two for y. So this is the spot that I begin at. But I gotta move according to my slope. Do not move according to your slope until you figure out what your rise and your run are. If this is my slope, what is the rise and what is the run? Negative two, one. Negative two over one. So that means am I going up or down for the two? Down. down. And then always run forward. I tell people always run forward, don't run backwards, just fall and trip, right? So always run forward. Use the negative as the fall or the rise, okay? Not, not left or right. It just is too much to, to remember. So I'm gonna go down two and then over one, I actually end up in the origin, don't I? Mm -hmm. And I could keep going and all my points will keep lining up. If I were to go down two and then over one again, it would still line up. But for Alex, you only need two dots and then you can draw the line. Oh, so you just basically turn that negative two into a fraction? Yes, and you have to. Because you need rise, but you, you also need, need run, run as well. Okay. I have a bunch. I just don't know how many. I have 38, so we have to keep going. They get easier, though, because they go into something else in a minute. Um, this one says, rewrite the equation in this form that is called standard form so that ax by equals c stuff that is um the standard form so they basically want you to take this which is in this form right it's in slope intercept form currently and they want you to write it into the standard form so we got to figure out how to do that now this is just me when you get to like college algebra and calculus, they always tell you that the number in the front, the A, should be positive. So that's why I wrote it on here. But in Alex, Alex doesn't care if the A is negative or positive, okay? So you can get away with it in Alex, but just FYI in the future, if you have to draw a line in standard, or write a line in standard form in calculus, which it may happen, if they say standard form, that guy in the front should not be negative. Okay, you'll get it wrong in the computer. <laughs> just A. No, just A. Just the guy in the very, very front. The rest of them will be whatever they are. You said that's always positive? It should always be positive. Alex, for some reason, doesn't care. <laughs> but in the future, generally in math, so just say it's, it's should, always it positive. Always I right. teach it that way. So okay. when you see me do the problems, I will always make sure that A is positive just because I don't want you to like be, oh, it doesn't matter, and then you get to calculus and all of a sudden it does, right? right? It does matter, right. <laughs> so I don't think it'll affect this too much, but still. One thing you need to notice is that A, B, and C are supposed to be integers. What that means is numbers, regular whole numbers, but positive or negative. What it doesn't mean is fractions. So you can't have fractions or decimals in your equation. But I have a fraction, don't I? So the first thing I need to do to make integers is get rid of the fraction. Now, when you were solving equations, how did you get rid of the fractions? Divide by its reciprocal. Or, you know. I mean, sort of, yes. What's the same thing as dividing by the reciprocal? Multiply. Multiply, multiply by okay. the common denominator, right? So what is the common denominator here? The only denominator? Three. Three. So make sure you multiply everybody Everything. by three. Okay. Then what happens is this three goes away, but that's gonna alter the rest of the equation, right? This is gonna become three y, then just one x, you could write the one or not, okay. and then plus what? Six. Plus six. Yeah, three times two is six. Now notice something else about the equation. X and y are on the left-hand side, right? And the constant is the only thing on the right-hand side. So my next step would to make this all by itself, which means what do I do with the one X? Subtract. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna subtract the one X. Yeah. Now, since the standard form has X's in front and Y's in the back, how can I write that here? Uh, negative X mm -hmm. uh, plus three Y? Correct. 
because that three is positive, isn't it? Yes, ma'am. And then I put my six. Mm -hmm. Now, Alex will accept this. This would be done for Alex, but just FYI, when you get to the higher level math, they do not like the front guy to be negative. So how would you put the, the, the uh, So what would you do? You'd, you'd make that, you'd add, add that one X to both sides? Nope, you don't want to move it back over there because we have it, we have everybody in the correct location. So you don't want to move people around because then you're not going to be in the correct location anymore, right? What you do want to do is turn it positive. How can you turn something positive? Divided by, divided by the uh -huh. negative? Yes. And what number will not change anything? One. One. So if you divide everybody by negative one, because remember, it's a balance beam, right? If you do it to one guy, you have to do it to everybody. But it will change your three Y, though. Yes, it will. It'll make that a negative, negative three, three right. and it'll make this a negative, negative six. six. And it doesn't matter. Integers can be positive or negative. The only thing is, is to have a true standard form, they do not like the front guy negative. But aces... Aces will take this, or it'll take this. They're, they're equivalent to one another, right? It's just like looking at the balance beam this way. If this is the balance beam, it's like you looking at it or me looking at it. It's still the same thing, right? <laughs> it's just which way you're looking at it. Okay, but those equ those equations are equivalent to one another. I'm just letting you know, Alex is okay with this for right now, but when you get to calculus, they don't like that. They like it like this. The front guy has to be positive. In Alex, in calculus. In calculus. In calculus calculus okay. is not inside Alex. There's no calculus oh, in Alex. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> you didn't know. <laughs> Alex goes up to college algebra and pre-cal, and then it stops. There's no calculus stuff for Alex. Otherwise, I'd be using it in my calculus classes. But it doesn't have calculus and it hasn't for the whole 10 years I've been using it so I doubt they're gonna get it okay let's see the next one the next one says write an equation in slope intercept form for the line with y intercept of negative 3 and slope of negative 2 now it says in slope intercept form that's a y equal mx plus b? Yes, it is. And if you go to your paper, right? Slope intercept form. Yeah. And that's what it has, right? Yes, so I want y equals mx plus b. That's what I want. Do I have the correct information to just plug in the numbers and then be done? Yes. Yep. Do I have slope? Yep. 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 What is it? Negative 2. Negative 2. And then do I have b? Yes. What is it? negative three now we don't like double signs right so what is a positive times a negative a negative a negative so it's just minus three <laughs> there's more i mean i still got like 17 more problems to go, but <laughs> they're going to change. So we're going to have, let me see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 11. And then we start getting into those inequality thingies. So we have 11 more of these, then I'll stop, and then I'll do a separate video for the inequalities, okay? <laughs> I mean, bro, but you no, nah, no, nah, bro, fifty, bro. You gonna have to be in the back or, or go. Get that <laughs> I don't even know anything about that. Okay, so what about this one? It says write an equation in slope-intercept form. That's this form, and it says that passes through the point negative six three and has a slope of four thirds. Do I have everything I need? Uh, do I have the slope? You got the slope. It's four do thirds. I have the B? Uh, what is? what is B? What does B represent? Your uh, uh, y intercept. Your y -intercept. Y -intercept. Is that a y intercept? No, that's a point. Mm -mm, that's a point. Uh, so uh, okay. <laughs> okay, this is where we come. Yes. I'm different from Alex. Okay. This is what I, mean right here. I like the same thing no matter what. 
That's just how I am. That way I don't have to remember, do this on this problem, do this on that problem, blah, 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 blah. Okay? So I'm actually going to backtrack to the previous problem and show you another way to do the previous problem. I know what we did was probably the easiest way, but I want to show you another way because this other way, quote unquote other way, works for every single problem that says write an equation. Okay? Every single one that says write an equation, it'll work. Okay? So I'm going to come back over here, and this is just my alternative way to do it. It is going to be longer. Is that that y minus y1? Yes, it is. Yeah, she tried to show me that the other day. It blew my mind. Yes, it is. Yeah. So notice on my sheet, I try to tell you the same thing. You're going to use this one, point slope form. Yep. You use this to write an equation of a line. So no matter what kind of problem it is, you start off with this. And then depending on what it wants, you can turn it into that other one, okay? Now, I don't like to use this one. I like to use this one, and do you notice the difference? Notice that that term is exactly the same, right? But you're missing... Uh, but okay, this guy, what happened to it? It got added over got added to the to other side, right. right? So I like to use this form whenever I'm doing the problem. Oh, uh, that's a positive Y1 there. Uh-huh. Oh, okay. So I'm gonna write down that formula first. And then I'm just going to fill in the information. So the slope is still the same slope, right? The slope is still going to be negative 2. Oh, you're using that problem. Okay. Mm -hmm, the same, no, the no, same one. Four okay. right. I want to show you that this one works, okay. and then we'll go do the other one. Okay? The only thing I'm missing is the x1, y1. Those are coordinates. Remember the subscript guys are coordinates. So do I have another point in this little paragraph? Is there a point somewhere hidden in that paragraph? Slope is negative two, two. but is isn't this guy a point? Negative three. Uh -huh. yeah. What are the coordinates of that point? It's a y-intercept of negative three. And if you need to graph it to see, it's going to be 0 and negative 3. Correct. Yes. 0 and negative 3. So then what would the x coordinate of that point be? Negative 3? The x coordinate. Oh, 0. 0. And then what's the y coordinate? Negative 3. Negative yes, 3. Y1. So then watch what happens. In this form, this is the form that they want my answer in. Okay. Right? I wrote that down from the paragraph. That's what they want my answer to look like. Mine does not look like that. Mine has parentheses, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. How do you get rid of the parentheses? Uh, mm -hmm. So if I distribute here, I'm going to get negative 2x. A negative and a negative will be positive, but what's 2 times 0? And then what's a positive times a negative? A negative. Mm -hmm. The only other thing different from mine and theirs is they combine their like terms. What is 0 and negative 3? Negative 3. Negative three. three. Yes. Did I get the exact same thing that I had before? Damn. We did, Damn. right? But this way works no matter what. Whether I'm given the y-intercept, whether I'm given the slope, whether I'm given two points, whether I'm given a, another point in the slope, it doesn't matter what information I'm given, this equation here will let me get the equation for the line. Okay? And that's why I put it on there. This is the one you want to use. Anytime you see this phrase here, write an equation or write the equation of the line, okay? Anytime you see that. So let's go over here and do this problem that way. So yes, I know that my answer needs to look like that, right? That's fantastic. But I don't have enough information just to put the M and put the B because I don't know what the B is, okay? But I do have X1 and Y1, don't I? I have an X coordinate of a point and a Y coordinate of a point. So I'm going to write my formula down again that's on my paper, and I'm going to put the slope. What's the slope? Four thirds. Four thirds. What's the x coordinate? Negative six. Negative six. So be careful there. There's a minus from the formula and a negative from the coordinate, right? Plus. Plus what's the y coordinate? Three. Three. Okay. Right? This one here. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So now when I distribute, what is this really? That's a positive. It's really a positive. 
So let's see, 4 thirds times x is still 4 thirds x. If you need your calculator, go for it. 4 thirds times 6, it is 8, and it's a positive 8, and a positive 3. What's the last thing I need to do to make it look like that? Combine like terms. Mm -hmm. 4 thirds x plus 11. And plus 11. And now it's in the form it needs to be in. Damn. Okay. Well, there's another way, too, where you can just plug it in, like, to that y of x. Plus yes. The way Alex does it, yeah. I'm going to show you how Alex does it. And it's exactly, okay. it's fine. It works. Okay. You know why, or you don't know why, but you know no, the slope, no. but you don't know the b. Right. What they do is they plug in the y coordinate for y. Uh -huh. yeah. Something went down the slope. Right? Yeah, I pushed on the okay. stupid button with my arm. Because <laughs> it's still recording. <laughs> okay, there we go. So the y coordinate, right, is three. Okay. My four thirds, and then the x coordinate is negative six. negative six. But I still don't know what the b is. Okay. So then what they did was they multiplied this, and they got negative eight. Does it work it out? Just like solve for b. And then they solved for b, so they added eight to both sides. Yep. And then they figured out that B was 11. So now you do know what the slope is, and now you do know what B is. So you put it back together, and you say 4 thirds X plus, plus the 11 you found. Okay. The only reason why I don't like that one is because a lot of people will do all the work, and then they'll say, oh, 11 is my answer. But that's not the answer. <laughs> that's just your that was just the work you did to figure out what the answer was. Okay. And whereas this one, once you're done, you have the answer. Okay. And I don't know why, but I don't have a graph over here. <laughs> so let me draw one real quick. Say it again. <laughs> what does it say? Find the line slope and a point on the line. Oh, it's one of these. It's not a graph problem. It's um, it's a different kind of problem. Where to go? There it goes. Yeah, I put it. I probably didn't change the date in Alex, but don't worry about it. I'll change it. Okay, so this one says find the line slope and a point on the line. Well, remember this right now is in this form the point slope form okay so i'm going to write that right underneath it y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1 okay now it's very easy to pick out the m because the m is what's in front of the parentheses right so that one's easy to pick out what's harder to pick out is the x coordinate more so the x coordinate and the y coordinate Okay, remember the minus sign is part of the problem, part of the form. So when you pick out the y1, this minus sign is the same as that minus sign, which means the three and only the three is the y coordinate. Okay, over here though, there's an issue, right? The form says it has a minus sign, but my problem does not have a minus sign, does it? But plus signs are actually double negatives in disguise, aren't they? So you could write, instead of plus 7, you could write minus negative 7. Is that the same as plus 7? Yeah, plus 7. So then there's the minus sign for the form, for the formula, but then that would mean that x1 would have to be what? If that's from the form, then x1 is what? Negative seven. Negative seven. So you have to be very, very careful. If you've got plus signs in there, you need to change them to double negatives. Okay.
Otherwise, you're going to get the wrong signs for your X1s and your Y1s. Let me do another one, just, just two. Okay. Oh, no, not two. So something like that. Remember, the formula has minus signs. So if you want to write this, you have to rewrite it like this. And then x minus 4, yeah. So then what is your slope here? Uh, negative 3. Mm -hmm. What is your y1? Uh, negative 2. And then your x1? Negative 4. Negative 4. Now in the computer, though, it'll, have, it'll say slope, and then it'll have a box. Yep. So for this problem, you would type in negative 1 half. Right. For this problem, you would type in the negative the three, three. Right. but then it's going to say point right, right. and point. And that you need to type in the coordinates. Okay. So you're going to put the X coordinate first and then the Y coordinate always, right? It, for points, it's always the X first, then the Y. So the same thing here. I'm going to put the X coordinate first and then the Y coordinate for okay. the point. Okay. But those are just a little tricky because the formula has a minus. So if your problem has a plus, you have to remember that's a double negative. Okay. I really don't like this problem, but because they never give you equations like that. Like when you get to calculus in college algebra, well, see, they don't, they don't, they don't, don't like, give you this. Alex, it doesn't break it down and tell you like that. It it'll doesn't say it. it, but it it'll, it'll show you. Like, it'll show this. It'll show right. It'll show. Have like this, this and then I'll have then this it'll show that, but it's not, and then it'll have the answer right, and it's not <laughs> like I'll get that and that's what I was missing that, that, that red part like well how are you getting this right. negative 2 and this negative 4 and right, like, right. what are you doing because of the double that? negative because yeah. of the double okay copy yeah. that alright they go another note right there yep 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 <laughs> but yes that's once you get to calculus you have to start learning how to read the language of math and because they are telling you they're just telling you in math symbols they're not telling you in words. <laughs> and we're used to being explained things in words, not in symbols, right? So that's where we got to start kind of like shifting. Your mindset on that. Yeah. Especially if you take my calculus class, because I'm very, very big on like, can you write this in symbols? Because if you're going to go on beyond me, you can't sit there and be like, well, if you do this to the equation and you do that to the equation, you can't do that with you have to be able to write it all out and then somebody can look at it, right? It's going to take you forever, pages to write that up. Okay, let's see. 24 says a line passes through this point and has a slope of 4 thirds. It says write an equation in the standard form for the line and then use integers A, B, and C. So I want my answer to look like this in the end. However, any time that it says this phrase, write an equation automatically you should use the formula on your paper that looks like this okay so on your note sheet you have that and it literally says use to quote unquote write an equation on your paper so it's telling you to do that so do i have the information do i need do i have a point the coordinates of a point yeah and do i have a slope yes ma'am so I can just plug everybody right in. So M is going to be the four, four thirds three. minus X1. What is X1? Negative six. Negative six. Close my big parentheses. Plus what is Y1? Negative seven. Negative. Negative seven. And so I can, I like to get rid of the double negatives before I distribute, but that's just me. Last time I, I just did it all together. X plus six, and then this would be what? Negative seven. Minus Negative seven. seven. Minus seven exactly. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. And then now I like to distribute once I don't have all those confusing signs going on. So four thirds x plus what? Eight again? Minus seven. Yeah, three and two and six. Yep. And then if I combine those, I get positive one. Yep. Is that in the form that they want though? Is that for number 24? 24. Is it in the correct it, form? No. Write an equation. I underlined it in blue, right? A it needs to look like that. AX for BY. And in that form, what do we know about A, B, and C? They cannot be what? Minus 
They can, be well, a cannot be minus, but something more important than that. They can't be fractions or decimals. They yeah. cannot. Yeah. This word yeah. integers means no fractions, no decimals. We don't care about positives or negatives, but no fractions, no decimals. Okay. So integers means no fractions or no decimals. No decimals, yep. Whole it's whole numbers, but with a plus or a minus. Because the word whole number or the phrase whole numbers all by itself means only the positives. Integers means you get positive whole numbers and yeah, negative whole numbers. Whole numbers. Okay. okay. So how do I get the fraction part to go away if I want this to be in standard form? What did we do the last time? <laughs> no. Nope. Multiply. Multiply by the common denominator. Common. That's how you get rid okay. of fractions when it comes to okay. equations. So then I'm kind of running out of room. I'm going to bring it up over here. So let me let me ask you this question. Sure. You. So what are you getting the multi what are you getting the uh the common denominator from because you the bottoms. But there's only one bottom, right? So yeah, that so has that, to be the common denominator. Okay, there you go. If there were there multiple go. bottoms, then yeah, I would have to figure say, that out. Now you have to yeah. figure it out. Okay, yeah. since you only got one, you only have to use that three. Okay. So this becomes 3y. The other threes cancel. So I get, so get 4x plus and then plus 3. three. Uh -huh. okay. Then now, yes, in order for me to get in this form, the x cannot be on this side. So we have to minus it. And then remember the order that they need to be in. X's need to be first, then your Y's, and then your constants on the other side. Positive 3 doesn't need the plus sign. Since it already, it's the only term over there by itself. So now that you're moving it, you don't have to do anything with it? With Alex will take this. Alex is fine with this. When you go to college algebra, Alex will not be okay with that. If that makes any sense, it's stupid. <laughs> so, if you, so if you're going to college algebra and you're moving that three by itself, will mm -hmm. it become minus three y then in algebra? In, in algebra, if they ask you to write the equation, this is not finished. Why? Correct. Okay. This guy's a negative, and so, it, and in a, sh a fast way to change this to a positive, without having to go divide by negative one, divide by negative divide is what you can do is just change the sign of everybody. If you change the sign of everybody, that's the exact same thing as dividing everybody by a negative one, right? Oh, yeah, so now you're going to get 4x so, minus 3y. And then now this negative is three. negative 3. And that's the final answer. And that's the same thing as dividing everybody by a negative, yeah. right? Yeah. You just have to remember to change everybody. Don't just change one guy. you got to change them all. Okay? Now, this one has, 25 has the exact same phrase, write an equation. So I'm going to put that formula that I'm supposed to use to write an equation. That's what it says on the note sheet to use this when it says write an equation. Now, I definitely don't have what I need written out, right? I don't see anything in parentheses. I don't see it telling me the slope is this, right? The yeah, information isn't explicitly given to me but it is implicitly given to me it's given to me just i have to kind of figure it out right so what can you can you start off at any point can you say yep. like, like x is zero and two where you're at correct zero and negative two yeah, right yes ma'am so i zero can use this as my x1 and my y1 for sure yep. so so far i have x minus zero for the x coordinate and then negative two for the y coordinate. That you can use, but what else am I missing? Uh, you're missing your mm -hmm. for your slope. So I'm gonna start here. How would I get to the other point? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. So what do I do? You can go up. One, One two, yeah. three, four, five, six. So I went up six, so this is positive. And then you go over what, negative three? Or One, two, two three, three. Yeah. uh-huh. But if I went to the left, it's what? Positive or negative? Negative. Negative. Yeah. So what is the slope then? Negative 2. Negative 2. So then now I know that this is negative 2. And it doesn't tell me what they want. It doesn't tell me how they want me to have yeah. write the line. 
So you could type in all of that and it should take it. I just don't like it. I like to get rid of the parentheses and combine, right? So I would do this and say negative 2x plus 0. And then these make a minus 2. So really, it's just negative 2x minus 2. And that's how I would type it in. But technically, Alex will accept this if they don't tell you how they want. If they don't tell you how they want the answer in there, you could, as long as all you have is X and Y, you could put the whole so, thing. So, but if it says simplify in there, you have to break it down. Yes, the then you would have to put it like that. Or if they tell you, well, I want it in this form, or I want it in that form, right, okay. then you have to put it in the correct form. Mm -hmm. But here it never said they wanted a specific form. So as soon as you put the numbers in where they belong, you could have. I just never do. To make them all look like this. And look, if I were to have started with my negative 2 intercept and went down 2 and over 1, don't I land on the line? Yeah. So that's the equation on the line. It matches. Okay, we've got, dun, dun, dun. still got a few. Let me stop this one. I'm going to have to separate it into videos because there's too many. Oh, don't look at that old chunky picture. <laughs>